Hey there, what's happening? Last year was the very first year I discovered Formula One. I know, I'm a bit late to the game. Um, I discovered it thanks to COVID, actually. The, the first lockdown sent me looking for things to watch online and someone recommended the Netflix show Drive to Survive and within the first five minutes I was hooked. And that really led me down a rabbit hole of discovery and it turns out I'm a huge fan of Formula One and of motorsports in general. So with the rain tapping away on my roof overhead and with a nice cup of tea in hand, I thought it might be nice to have a look forward to the season ahead and just lay out the things that I'm excited for in 2021. So let's get stuck in. The first thing I'm excited about is a return to some truly iconic tracks. And some people love the glitz and the glamour of Monaco. Some people hate it because of the dull racing that you sometimes get there. Personally, I love it. It's one of the hardest circuits on the calendar. Its margins of error are so tight and it's way too easy to end up in the barrier. Just ask Michael Schumacher or Martin Brundle or Max Verstappen or anyone else whose name starts with M. Seems to be a pattern there. But Monaco is one of those incredibly demanding circuits and I just can't wait to see the cars tackle it again this year. Being a city circuit, it's even more difficult to lock down or to create a bubble for, so there's every chance that we won't see it, but I'm really hopeful that we see it in this year's season. Formula One hasn't raced at Zandvoort since 1985. It was a Formula One staple from the 50s right through to the mid 80s, and it was meant to be in the calendar, have its great big comeback last year, but COVID uh, got in the way. But I think this year, hopefully we should be able to race there and I'm really excited about this. It's Max Verstappen's home circuit. I think the atmosphere there is gonna be absolutely electric and I'm really excited to see it there. I think it's gonna be a really interesting addition and hopefully it sticks around. Last year, the Algarve International Circuit was a bit of a late addition to the calendar and it was one of those banging tracks that was a real surprise. It was incredibly demanding on the drivers. Seeing some pretty unusual circumstances like Carlos Sainz Jr. taking the lead for a couple of laps uh, early on in the race and also some amazing wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing through the first part, the first sector of the track um, at various times during the race. Um, the Portimao circuit was a real highlight for me and I'm so excited to see it again this season. The undulation of that circuit is unreal. Imagine the Eau Rouge Radion complex, but like three or four of those in a single lap. It's so awesome and to see the way the drivers handle that, to see the challenge, how difficult it was to actually get the braking zones right, the wheel to wheel racing, just awesome. I'm so excited to see that again this year and I'm really hopeful that we get some good racing there. Now, I've never been to an F1 race myself um, and with COVID, there's zero chance I'll get a chance to sample any of the circuits or races outside of Australia. So I only have my imagination to go on thinking about the atmosphere, the noise, the buzz, the sounds, everything that goes into an F1 race meet. I've never been there before, I've never experienced it, and Albert Park is the only chance I'll get to this year. So, fingers crossed I'll get a chance to go down south to take part in the Australian, take part, <laughs> to be there at the Australian Grand Prix later this year. Um, who knows what will happen with COVID, whether borders will be closed between New South Wales and, and Victoria, but fingers crossed I'll get a chance to go sample that. Really looking forward to seeing uh, Danny Rick on his home circuit and also just to sort of take in the atmosphere of a Formula One race meet. Now, Fernando's been out of the sport since 2019, but he certainly hasn't been uh, just on gardening leave. He's been racing at the Indy 500 and at the Dakar Rally and at the ripe old age of 39, I think he's got something to prove. He's got fire in the belly still, and I think he's going to show that he's not ready to hang up the helmet just yet. Two-time world champion with a new team in Alpine, 
seeing how much speed Danny Rick was able to pull out of the Renault package last year makes me think that Fernando's got a great chance to pull a surprise out of the bag and really upset the midfield battle. It'll be interesting to see if he's still got the speed that he had before when he was competing at his, at his peak. And it'll be interesting to see how it goes with Esteban Ocon. But I think this is gonna be an interesting year and the sign of something good to come with Fernando. Now, I don't really know much about Mick other than his famous surname and the fact that he won the F2 championship last year in 2020. But he seems like he's got um, serious race pace He's got a lot of experience under his belt. He managed to hang on and win the F2 championship despite some serious competition from, from others. It'll be interesting to see if he can live up to the famous Schumacher name or if he'll buckle under the pressure. He'll be at the back of the grid in Haas machinery. Um, but of course, for him, it'll hopefully be a step along the path towards a seat at Ferrari in the future. And who knows, maybe he'll be able to go toe to toe with Lewis Hamilton at some point or Max Verstappen and, um, and give them a run for their money. He's young, he's full of energy, he's a go-getter. I think it's gonna be an exciting year for him. Now, bear with me. I know he's not contracted to race this year and you know he got the shunt last year after really a horrible season, but think about it. Last year we had two guest appearances by Nico Hülkenberg for Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez when they got COVID. George Russell subbed in for Lewis Hamilton when he had a case of COVID. I think there's going to be another situation this year where one of the drivers will contract COVID and they'll be out. We'll, they'll need someone to replace him. And who's got more experience in this, this season's package than Alex Albon? Of all the drivers that are not racing this year, I think Alex is in the best position to step in and be super sub, uh, more so than Nico Hülkenberg. Let's not forget also that Red Bull has four drivers with the two in Alpha Tauri, compared to most teams which only have two. So that's double the exposure, double the risk that one of their drivers will be exposed and catch COVID. So I wouldn't be surprised if Alex Albon was given the call up to sub in for one of those drivers and I'd love to see him take the most of that opportunity and really shine. It'll be fascinating to see if they gel really well as a team or if things get really spicy behind the scenes. Ricardo's got history of having friction with a competitive teammate, so there's the potential there, but they're also just such um, fun-loving guys that it might just be even more of a bromance than what we had with Norris and Sainz. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. I can't wait to see my boy Danny Rick uh, succeed in better machinery. I think McLaren's on the rise. And of course, Norris is in his um, third or fourth season. So he's got a lot of experience under his belt, knows the McLaren team inside out. And those two working together, I think can achieve some pretty amazing things. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm excited to see the racing start again this week in Bahrain. I hope like hell that we don't get another COVID shutdown uh, if it does, so be it, but also we know that F1 and the FIA and the teams are more than resilient and can find a way forward in uncertain territory. I'm really looking forward to seeing what unfolds at all these iconic circuits and whether these drivers have what it takes to get to the top. So what about you? What are you keen to see? What are you worried about? What are you excited about? What teams do you think are going to be at the front of the grid come end of season? And who do you think is going to be on the dustbin let us know in the comments and if you like this video hit like hit subscribe do all those good things and there'll be plenty more next time around see you then